Hello everyone and welcome to Beginner's Code. Today we are going to be replicating a roulette table spinning 1000 times with the results being shown in a bar graph. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just import some stuff that we need. So what we definitely need is the random library. So from, sorry, from random, um, we're going to import randint. Next, we need to actually have a um, library installed that we can use to show this visually. So you can either use matplotlib or seaborn or pandas, but for this, I'm going to use plotly. So from plotly um, dot graph obj um, import bar and layout, and then from plotly import offline. Okay, so now we want to create a class that represents our roulette table. So class roulette, and then we will create our constructor method. So underscore underscore init, and that will take self and numbers, and we will give the numbers a default value of 36, because on a roulette table, it goes from zero through to 36, including 36. So the next thing we need to do is just give the self dot numbers an, um, an assignment. And now we can create a function to spin our roulette table. So def spin, and this will take the self parameter. And then we will just return the rand int going from zero through to self dot numbers. So this will take two parameters, zero and 36, and this will just randomize a number between those two numbers, including 36. So now we can actually instantiate our roulette, and we now have our table that we can spin. And we just want to create an empty list so that we can keep track of our results. Now, we need to use a for loop because we're going to generate a, a thousand spins for this roulette table. So we can use a for loop with a range of a thousand and we can just start outputting results to this results list. So for num in range 1000, we then want to create a new variable and this will be assigned to table.spin. So this variable will hold this method here. So it will take a number that's randomized between zero and 36 and it will be stored in result and it will do this a thousand times. But first we need to add this result to the list of results. So this now is results.append and then we'll pass in this result here. So now this will be generated a thousand times and we will have a thousand random numbers generated. So now if I just save this and then if I try and run it, we'll see what we get. Sorry, I need to print the results first. So now if I run it, we will get an outputted list of a thousand results. And just very briefly, I don't think we can see anything that's over 36, which is perfect. I'm just gonna make this a little smaller again and then close. Okay, so now we can delete the results or the print uh, statement. What we wanna do is try and have a way of counting how many times each random number appeared. So we can create a new list and this one we will call frequencies. And then we need to use another for loop and with this for loop we're going to count each number and then add it to the frequencies. So for value in range going from zero through to table dot table dot numbers plus one. So now we can use or create a new variable called frequency. And this will just use the results. So this list here, dot count, and we will just pass in the value. So we are gonna, gonna go through 
the list of results, we're going to check the value of zero first of all. We're going to count how many times the value of zero appeared and we will store it in this frequency variable. And then we will append to the end of this frequencies list this new variable that we've created. So now what we're doing is we are going to go zero, see how many times that appeared, add it to this list of frequencies, and then we'll loop through again and we'll do it with one. And then we'll see how many times one appeared and we'll add it to frequencies, and then two and three and all the way through up until we get to 35, but then 35 plus one, so 36. So that will be all of the numbers covered, but this needs to go up to 36 plus one so that we are including the value of 36. Okay, so now that we have the main data actually done, well, what we can do is just print results and then print frequencies. And if I save this and head back to my terminal and then run again, you see now we have two sets of lists. So this list down here is a lot smaller and then we have this first list, which is a lot bigger. So now we can kind of see that we have numbers down here which correlate to the values of um, 0 through to 36 for the numbers. And this is actually just the amount of times each number has appeared. So the position here represents 0, which means it is the 0... Um, index which in this case is the value of zero so then we have had 23 occurrences of the value of zero 36 of the value of one 27 of the value of two and so on all the way through until we get to the last number which is 36 so now we can delete these two print statements and we want to just start putting all our information together so that we can see it in a much more visual way because that is very, very difficult to read, and it will be a lot easier when it's all in a bar chart. So first we want to create a new variable for the x value. And this will be assigned to the list of a range that goes from zero through to table dot numbers plus one and then data, which will be a list of the bar instantiated. So x is equal to x underscore values, and then y is equal to frequencies. So we are instantiating this bar into a list that will be instantiated every time for the x values, so 36 times. So we will have 36 x values along the x axis, and then it will be plotted against the y axis or the frequencies. So now we can actually configure the x-axis. So x underscore axis underscore config is equal to, and now we can give a title. So title will be results. And notice we're using a dictionary now so that the key is the title and the value is the actual title that we want to use. So now we can change the tick size, so D ticks, and then one. And now we can do the X axis, and this will be the same, so title, and then frequency of result. And now we can just actually adjust the layout, so my underscore layout, and now we can instantiate the layout that we have imported. So this will take a title parameter, results of spinning a roulette table 1000 times. And now we can actually store the x-axis config and the y-axis config into the layout that we have just instantiated. So x axis is equal to x axis config and then y axis is equal to y axis config. 
And now we can just imp we can use the um, offline import that we have imported from Plotly. So offline dot import. Um, sorry, offline dot plot, and then we can pass in the data. So data is equal to data. Layout is equal to my underscore layout. And then outside of that dictionary, we can just create a file name. So our table dot HTML. And now this will, when we run it, will open our plot in an offline HTML file that we can use on the website. So now if I run this, because we don't have any print statements in our code, we will not get this, which is good. So if I run this, I did mean dtick, my bad. So if I take the S out and then head back and run it again, we now have it open in our own HTML file. So this is using Safari. And you can see that the value one actually has occurred 40 times, which is quite high. And the value of 12 is the lowest, which has occurred 14 times, which is considerably low. But you can kind of see that there is a rough average to each one. And um, we have all the values from 0 through to 36. So there are 37 numbers there, just like on a roulette table, but not including obviously red, black and etc. So we can kind of see that there is roughly an average of about 25. It kind of dips a lot lower in some places and goes a lot higher in others. It may be a little bit higher than 25. It might be around about 26, 27. But yeah, it's a lot easier to see and a lot easier to make out than it was with, if I can get there, all of these numbers here. <laughs> This makes it 10 times easier, 10 times nicer to look at, and it's a lot easier to send on to someone and say, look how many times number one's appeared. Let's go and put a bet on number one. That's all for today's video. Hopefully this has helped your understanding on how we can use Python to create very easy to read graphs to visualize our data. If you liked what we've been through and you want to learn more, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date. In the next video, we will be looking at a little more at how we can use HTML and CSS to create some front-end designs for our website. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.